We're at the Classic Grand in Glasgow, and I'm joined by Steve Williams, John Cleland from Eden's Curse. Indeed. And how are you guys today? Yeah, we're doing great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've had a good couple of days rehearsals, past, past couple of days at Berkeley Studios. Uh, we've been here since sort of late afternoon yesterday, I suppose, setting yeah. up, making sure because it's a live album recording. Uh, no stern, no stern, no stone has been left unturned, <laughs> and no stern either for that matter. <laughs> because I have been watching your Facebook feed and there from going up, we're like set up, we're ready, sounding good. Yeah. So status updates. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be done. Where would we be without Facebook? Eh? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Paper and pen and yeah. carrier pigeon, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so has anything had any mishaps so far? Has it all been okay? So no, far? it's it's all been good. Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. I don't think you know. We're we're fairly, fairly well prepared anyway when we get together because obviously we've been spread far and wide. <clears throat> we don't get the opportunity to, well never mind rehearse <laughs> together that often, spend time together and, and so on and so forth. So we try and make the, the absolute most of it when we do have the opportunities. Yeah, yeah Paul, Paul and I uh, rehearse in Glasgow, you know, the same studios that we're rehearsing in the last couple of days, uh, just bass and drums uh, to tighten things up. Um, so that you know that helps before well, everyone gets together. Absolutely, it's a massive yeah. benefit. Well, not only for you guys, but for the rest of us as well. Yeah. You know, if, you, if your rhythm section's tight as a what's it, then uh, you know you've got the platform. And you know. basically, where would you be without the internet? <laughs> So yeah. one good thing about multi well, international bands now as well is you can actually watch you go online all at the same point, talk to each other and stuff. It is actually handy as well. But we rarely, right. we we rarely do that on, know, yeah. on, on online, could, do we? You, you could. could. <laughs> yeah, no, it's here, actually, yeah. But, yeah, we, well, life gets in the way, strange, doesn't yeah. it? You know, everybody's or, busy. Or there's something on TV I want to watch. Now I'll, I'll catch up <laughs> yeah. news later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, let's talk to TK. Oh, no, I'll watch TV. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go in our tea. <laughs> So obviously, first, obviously, this is the first live album. What made you decide you wouldn't do one the night? Well, I think it's not really a sort of holding exercise, yeah. if you like, but it's probably the time in a in a band's career to do some kind of live recording, whether it's a, a DVD or whether it's a, a studio kind of just pure audio type thing like we're going to do today. And you know, the reaction to the last studio album was such that people are clamouring for more product. Now you don't want to rush out, you know, a new set of songs. You know, I know from my time in previous bands that you, you just can't do it. Well, you can do it, but if you want to keep the quality at the level or even higher than the level you've previously been at, you need to take your time. And you guys are spread out as well. So. Well, yeah, and plus the fact, you know, John's come in at the turn of the year, so it'll be his first studio album when we come to it next time. Yeah. It's interesting to start, <laughs> to start with a live album in a way, isn't yeah, it? You yeah, know, that's uh, right, yeah. You're thrown in at deep end, yeah. <laughs> yeah. literally. We had the, the tour back in May, so that was good. My first ever mm. gig with the band was in Glasgow okay. in May, so yeah, back here again. <laughs> <laughs> we wait you back, what can we say? <laughs> you must be good, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, from a stopgap point of yeah. view, it, it's an opportunity to maybe put some songs together in, in a set that we haven't done before. And there's certainly, uh, is it three? Yeah, it's three tunes in there that we haven't played live before. Uh, I don't think two of them have ever been played live before, if I'm right. So that's, uh, that's a cool thing in itself. And again, you know, drawing on past experience, you can't go out and churn out the same set over and over and over again. And I think with myself coming into the band, I'm known for being more on the the speedier, faster side of things and heavier side of things probably than uh, Eden's Curse typically are. And I think those influences will probably come out more on the next studio album, if you like. I, I came to the party quite late for Symphony of Sin, so I was trying to turn around a whole album that's already done. And I, I was at the time working away from home a lot, so I was in hotel rooms with a MIDI keyboard and a laptop, and said, oh yeah, that's that one, yeah, send it over. Yeah, can you just change that, blah, blah, blah. So you did a day at work, you then pretty much another day at work in the evening, you know? Yeah. No rest for wicked eat. Well, that's right, and, and they don't come more wicked, do they, John? Well, that's going to answer my question later on, <laughs> So yeah, I think it's, um, it's something that hopefully, you know, the fans are going to receive in a positive way and it, as I say it gives us that little bit of time to start developing the new the new songs and we're checking out a few ideas over the past couple of days and there's some interesting interesting things in the pipeline yeah. I think. Yeah. 
So what, are you, bringing to, ones what, well. what are you bringing to the band? Um, I guess, you know, I've worked uh, with Paul with Code of Silence before, so kind of Paul knew how I worked and I knew how he worked, and um, just really a good uh, working relationship, good friends with them and stuff. Um, so I guess he knew what my drumming was about, um, and so, you know, he put me forward for, for the job in Eden's Curse, and, you know, I already loved the, the band. The I just song was, yeah, great song, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Great musicians, great songwriting, and especially Symphony of Sin, um, you know, with, with Nick and with Steve in the band, I thought it took the band to a, a higher level, you know, so, yeah. Well, I suppose my, listening back to the record now, I think the, the differences, I think, bet between myself and previous keyboard players, and, it, and it's not about who's better, you know, it, it's not that, it's just, I'm much more modern I think in terms of you know style sounds even you know the, the previous guys were quite into their hammered organs and that kind of stuff and I'm more into sort of head blasting lead sounds and that kind of thing you know and we never guess you yet no no I, I know that people sit down I know that's a surprise but uh, <laughs> but I, I think the fusion of the whole more classic rock side with the kind of um hints of the AOR, you know, I would never call the band an AOR band, but there's elements of it, in the same way that it was with PowerQuest to be fair, and then you fuse the speedier stuff on top, and I suspect with uh, the next studio album we'll find uh, a bit more high octane Ooh, and stuff you, and going you edged on. Yeah, yeah, I think edge is the right word, you know, TK from a guitar point, if he's quite keen to get a bit faster and heavier as well, you know, and uh, I mean, him, him seem to have developed, uh, as you need to as a guitar player and as a keyboard player, you need to have that kind of interplay in the same way that you and Paul need to yeah. for the for the rhythm section, so it's, it's great to be able to just come into something and there's none of this kind of, oh don't do that, do this, you know, pretty much everything I've suggested and I'm sure it's the same for you, it's like, oh that's a good idea, let's do that. And if it know? doesn't yeah. work out, you can try something else. That's exactly. The of it. You know, yeah. it, it's a... Uh, an open forum. You know? Yeah, everyone in the band is very easy to get on with, and you know, everyone listens to everyone else's yeah. ideas. You know, even like me and you coming into the band, you know, I feel like just on the same level as everyone else, which is a great feeling. That is fantastic. Well, I think we're all of um, a similar vintage. <laughs> you know, apart classic, from... classic vintage. Yeah, 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 yeah. A good classic vintage, yeah, I'll say that. Maturing with age, as it were, but you know, Nick's a few years younger than the rest of us, obviously. But, um, you know, myself. John, and TK, you know, Paul again is a few years younger, but not enough to be <laughs> make, make, make a difference. So I think we're, we're all from the same background, we're all from the same kind of gr grew up with the same things, you know. So that it does help, yeah. it helps massively. Yeah. And we can sort of bounce ideas off each other and stuff as well, which does help. You can actually, oh, can you do this? Yeah. You mean, or how about that? Oh, yeah. If it works. Yeah. Exactly. And and equally, you know, if. Uh, you know, I'll say, oh, what about this? And TK will say, well, yeah, but what if you just twist that bit round? Oh, yeah, you're right. And as a keyboard player, you'd never think of that perspective. <laughs> and the guitar player, you know, would not normally think in terms of the keyboard player. And sometimes you fuse the two things together and you get something that neither of you would have developed on your own. Which is you good, because it, yeah. I mean, it's more unique and stuff as well. And also it's just, you but oh, I like this. <laughs> it, it's a kind of spontaneous thing, isn't it? You know, yeah, because even we were jamming, you know, just during the rehearsals <laughs> yesterday and stuff, just jamming ideas, and you could tell things sounded great right away, you mm. know, just as we were kind of playing together. Yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, so, yeah. So, do you have a tentative date at all for a new album? I want this album now, by the way. <laughs> new studio <laughs> album? Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, not, not, not at this stage, I think there's... Uh... You've been teasing me for the last ten minutes, <laughs> very much. Well, that's kind of the idea, isn't it? It's like dangling the carrot, you know? <laughs> Forget the live album straight to the So obviously a live album, when do you want it to be out? Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the... Uh, I, I'm assuming, based on the normal timeline for these kind of things, we'd be looking at somewhere in the March, April kind of neck of the woods. Peace thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whether we'll do... Well, yeah, I think we are doing some live work round yeah. down as yeah, well. March, March, yeah, March, I think. Yeah. We have to Germany for the first time in Freedom Call and Vasbury Rock, is that even it? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, se second time, funnily enough, for me with Freedom Call. <laughs> you know, and it is, uh, it's a good crack with those boys. They're some of the nicest, nicest chaps in, in metal, really. You know, they're just regular guys, friendly as you like. And uh, it, it really was... It's going to be more of a hold even a tour event. 
Well, you, <laughs> yes, no. Touring's never a holiday, <laughs> you know. It it really isn't. I get your meats. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, it, it's <laughs> the best way to tour, and I know it, it's a financial constraint, but you know I've found this with PQ that uh, get yourself a tour bus. It take. I know it costs money, but it takes the stress out of everything. You know, having done four week tours with that band, a three or four day tour under your own steam is far more tiring than 20 days yep. tour bus wise you know but I think you know German dates I'm not sure uh, what Paul's got up his sleeve in terms of the uh, the logistics and, and all that kind of thing but you know quite honestly my days of sleeping in the back of a van and all that kind of thing are well and truly gone and with, with a tour bus you can just walk out at the end of the night in this air you have to go and try and find the hotel back again absolutely you know the, the value for three or four shows probably isn't there to be fair but uh, the, the other thing we have to deal with as well, you know, is the fact that we're all flying into these places from different, different places, places, you know. Obviously, you and Paul can uh, head off together, can't yeah, you? Yeah, and, and last, um, for, we did a gig in Belgium, and uh, Paul left for Glasgow and I left for Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah, and we thought, well, we should actually just travel together. Yeah, so, yeah but we'll it's easier, that but that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do hate travelling on my own for these things, you know. I, and never did it with PQ in the 12 years. You have to fly up here and fly away with them too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just becomes impossible to find that perfect scenario. But, you know, previously when we played Europe and stuff, the, the vehicles would start in this country and across. head off rather than flying into wherever the shows might be, yeah. picking up a vehicle and then going from there. You know, it's, it's a different... Uh, Different way of doing it. It's going to test you in different ways. I'm going to test my patience, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, how, how good is his patience? It's <laughs> good. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, there'll, there'll be a few people over the years who tell you differently, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, listen, Ebb's got patience, we're going to snap at some point. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, I, I always viewed myself as an old man of janitor kind of thing. And, uh, <laughs> Hong I'd, Kong food just popped yeah, out. Yeah, there you go. Not everybody <laughs> gets that reference, you know. I'm true, uh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's pressure gets to everybody at some point and in different ways, you know. But uh, I suppose one of the interesting things for me about being in this band is I haven't got a lot of the pressures that I used to have. <laughs> I'm just the keyboard player, you know. Kind of, you yeah. know. But it saves the hassle for you. You can just go and enjoy and kick back and practice new tunes and stuff. Absolutely. But on the flip side, I think from Paul's perspective, it's useful to have somebody who's been around the block a few more times. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. in the nicest kind of way. <laughs> your experience, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you can also suggest something you maybe never thought of and stuff as well. Yeah, you very go, much so. We did it this way, but this didn't work, but we did try this. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always something... Whatever situation you're in, there's all, you always learn. Yeah. Oh, always learn. <laughs> it's a life, we'd be born our way. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it any particular band, past or present, that you'd want to support and why? Hmm. Um, I'm just myself some more. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a nice little evil one just to get in there. <laughs> um, the band I question is easy. I suppose. Um, Somebody like Dio, I would love to have supported, you know, um, talking in the past and um, even bands like Dokken, you know, I was right into the kind of 80s rock. Um, more uh, current bands, um, I guess, well, I miss Dream Theatre, you know, um, and so did so Steve, you know, like the, the band did two dates with Dream Theatre, I would have loved that. Um, there you go, you'll go back with Dream Theatre, that's yeah. it. <laughs> but um, a big festival, you know, we're going to Vasby, I'd love to do Sweden Rock, um, it's another one, you know, just a huge festival, so many great bands. Um, Queenstrike, I suppose, would be another band I would love to. Uh, I see, I see you doing Queenstrike, actually. Que- Queenstrike <laughs> circa 1988. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, when not, everything not was ticking of, along nicely yeah. but for them, yeah. Not the kind yeah, of circus like Empire it's and and Yeah, very much, so, <laughs> very much so, very much so, mate, yeah. Yeah, I suppose for me, I'd love to have um, played with the Hagar era of Van Halen. You know, and and a, a, as a keyboard player, my style is very similar to what they were doing around the 5150 kind of uh, kind of territory. Um, Sabbath, a bit like you with Dio. Sabbath with Dio would be great. You know, I, I can't abide Sabbath with Ozzy. You know, I really, I really can't. And quite honestly, I wish they'd fuck off now. It's, it's just. It's not the same as it was. No, not at all. And I guess. I don't know, you know, even, even maybe bands like Deep Purple and 
and people like that, you know, the real classic big names. The, for bands from the time when, you know, bands were massive, they were massive bands. Yep. It's not know. just internet hit kind of thing uh, or anything, that is the huge. And I suppose to throw one other one in that yeah, everybody would want to do, surely, Iron Maiden. Has to, has to be said, Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden. <laughs> had to be said somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm fortunate, really, that um, over the years, you know, I got to play one of my dreams, been a massive Halloween fan, was getting to play through shows with those guys. I know it's not a kind of super sonic stellar awesome. band, but what a, what a bunch of guys as well, you yeah. know. And I think that was the first time I played Glasgow, actually, with uh, with Halloween back at, what was it, QMU, I think? Oh, God, that was a while ago. Yeah. That was, yeah. actually. That's part of ten years ago, I think. <laughs> Sad thing is I remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> well, you've been swiftly on. <laughs> we feel my age now, don't we? <laughs> so, obviously... We've got Scottish and English local delicacies. What is your favourite Scottish food and English food? Well, I'm not English. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you love now. I'm Welsh. You are. <laughs> What's your Welsh food? Um, oh, I, 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 do a I think it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think when it comes to food, though, there's, yeah. there's not a lot. Of, nah. Just, to be honest, fry ups. One of my, uh, well, as you know, I'm always after a fry yeah. up in the morning yeah. wherever we are, <laughs> truck stops or motorways. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's my the heaven. The they are. Yeah. You know, I love places where you can have a roast dinner at six in the morning. You know, that, that's another <laughs> one of my favourite. It, it does. <laughs> but it's just the fact that you can do that. Wow, it's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, you know, fry up, roast dinner, the traditional kind of things, you know, when you <laughs> start. Food. That's a good food of you. <laughs> Um, I suppose I should say some like Scottish salmon, but I'll say haggis. <laughs> no, I like vegetarian haggis. I'm not, not I'm, keen on I'm that. Not a haggis, I'm no. I'm sorry. I'm Scottish. I'm not Scottish. <laughs> I've only had it a couple of times. I actually quite uh, quite appreciated it. You know? Similarly, black pudding as well. You know, that's another kind yeah. of. I'm I'm having veggie haggis. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, what are delicacies from abroad that do you like? I'm a big fan of Italian cuisine. R really, uh, an Italian cuisine in Italy. Okay. You know, Proper stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I've been uh, three Italian guys in Power Quest for so many years. <laughs> you know, I had many opportunities to go out mm -hmm. there, and, and even simple things like a pizza tastes a thousand times better. You know, risot a risotto. You know, it's, oh. so yeah, Italian food is right up there, and I, I'm a big fan of um, sort of Asian food as well. You know, I'm big into me uh, Indian, and I also like Japanese as well. You know, it's uh, don't get the opportunity. Mania, that often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's probably with me. It's easier to say what I don't like. To be fair. <laughs> what was your most hated food? Um, ooh, what do I really? What do I really? This is all come to you as well, by the way. Me Mexican, I'm not a grand king, which is funny, really, because I like spicy Thank Indian, you. but I don't like spicy Mexican just food. It's just one of those things. And um, you know, when it comes breaking it down to vegetables and stuff, sweet corn. Oh, sweet awesome. The most pointless invention ever. <laughs> I can smell it at a hundred paces, you know. <laughs> sweet corn is good. Right, we're going to pick on you now. Okay. Um, Favourite cuisine? Um, I suppose uh, Japanese as well. Mm. You know, like uh, kind of the kind of fusion. You know, Japanese Chinese fusion, and um, also I actually like Mexican food. <laughs> so I like all the melt with cheese and stuff. Um, yep. This um, works this way. <laughs> Um, and pizza as well. So, yeah, just kind of like Steve, I like most things. I uh, like Indian as well. Um, really, What's the worst, food ever? worst um, I don't like cucumber. I hate it. I hate cucumber. I just, I don't know. It's just, it's not so bad when you take the skin off, but um, otherwise, just. It's not a lot of flavour to it, really. No. No, but, you know, there are numerous vegetables, though, that fall into that category. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my other half is, uh, is a vegetarian. And. Uh, She's an amazing cook as well, so she rustles up these fantastic meals with, if you look at the component parts, you think, God, that's going to be awful. But it isn't. It's fantastic. So <laughs> I, I pretty much veer sort of 50-50 between vegetarian eating and meat eating, partly because I'm lazy and I want my meals cooked for me. But <laughs> meat, meat and veg in two different bits. Yeah. <laughs> but bless her, you know, she'll, she'll happily slave away in the kitchen, do me, you know, whatever meat I've asked for or surprise me with it and she'll have done an equally amazing vegetarian thing as well it's you know you can't you can't say too much about that really as long as you enjoy it that's amazing yeah a couple of quick questions for you mm -hmm. I'll say it's coming to the bar humbug season I call it Christmas season have you been naughty or nice this year 
I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> busy being naughty, probably. But <laughs> uh, no, this is what the wicked bit came in from here. See, it's, <laughs> it's been a, a funny year, really. In a way, I just seem to be work, 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 and more work. You know, and you know, with the same work and no play and all that kind of thing. So it's quite nice. There's a bit of a release coming away and, and doing this. We haven't done that much live work really this year, uh, but it. it Gives you a break from uh, the grind, you know. So it's uh, it's nice to get out. But yeah, you know, it's it's been a bit of good year. A lot of pressure. I moved house as well and all that kind of stuff. So there's lots going on. But uh, but overall, yeah, I suppose yeah, I guess I've been a good boy. <laughs> and you, you and um, yeah, you just <laughs> busy as well because you know we're just joining the band, having to learn the whole set and things, um, and then working on songs for the new album. Um, so yeah, busy and but nice because I'm um, just kind of a nice guy. So you'll soon knock out, won't you? You will. You go on. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't think I could knock the nice guy out of John, to be honest. You can yeah. <laughs> so if there's a present you could get from Metal Santa, what would you want for Christmas? Oh, it's, uh, it's I funny, is Yeah, even if it wasn't Metal Santa, you know, if it was just a what you want for Christmas. I think I got to the point in life where I, I kind of don't want stuff anymore. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, you kind of got all the things you need um, from a purely um, musical you, perspective. You by maiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but back, back on Reality Planet. Well, you uh, never know, it's Metal Santa. I, I'm due an upgrade in the keyboard department. I've uh, been very restrained over the past few years, so I think, you know, come the turn of the year, I'll be uh, upgrading the entire setup. I've cut down to one keyboard for this show, which is the first time I've done that for the best part of 10 years. Um, so yeah, some new toys in that that kind of area would be nice. <laughs> and you? Um, you think think about us? <laughs> another symbol, I suppose. Can never have two symbols. Drummers always say that yeah. one more symbol in there. <laughs> yeah. You can never have too many. No, always in spares. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We break. I mean, that's fine. We do break. That's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. There's one on the merch store. In fact, we've signed it all, and it's like a raffle yeah, to win it. So yeah, they do break. <laughs> It's because you hit him too hard. But that's, why, that's why he's so nice. He takes all his aggression out on you. <laughs> that's why he's doing it. Yep. Yep. Um, any final message for our listeners? Well, I'd just like to say, you know, to all the EC fans out there, you know, we uh, we appreciate the support you give us, you know, all all the way through, you know, and I'm sure from Paul's position from the start, you know, we, we can only really comment on uh, our time in the band, but the fans I've met on the road so far or messaged me, you know, whatever it may be, you know, it, all lovely guys, you know, very similar to the, the Power Quest fraternity. And, uh, you know, me and Paul go way back anyway before... Uh, before either of us uh, were in a band together, um, so we yeah we, yeah we're very much uh, peas from the same pod if you like you know so it works quite well but yeah you know just thanks for all the support I hope I hope you like the live record when it comes out uh, next year look forward for a, a new studio album we're writing at the minute we're we'll continuing that in the new year and looking for uh, oh, I have no idea really on a release date but whether it's tail end of 2015 or early 2016 I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, yeah, keep, keep following us, keep checking the Facebook page and the Eden's Curse official website. Um, ping us messages, any questions you've got, you know, we'll, we'll do our very best to answer them. So thanks for everything. Yeah, I just agree with everything <laughs> Steve said. You know, you just stole your phone, oh, no, didn't you? You <laughs> yeah. had the big speech all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't really add anymore. You know, I mean, all the fans on Facebook and things that have that have noticed, you know, um, they're just so passionate about the band, um, and you know, long may that continue. And just really appreciate being in the band. Great to do this live album, and hope all the Eden's Cause fans enjoy it. We will do. If not, you hear about it, we're all money. <laughs> we want our money back. <laughs> no, it's going to be fantastic tonight. So. But thank you ever so much. Pleasure. Thank you.